Hello and welcome to the Think Bamboo podcast. Today our guest here is Oswald Wieser from Smart Grass Bicycles. Is uh, that correct, Oswald? Absolutely. Well pronounced. Thank you. Welcome to the podcast. Great to have you here on board. <laughs> Thanks for the invitation. I love to talk about that subject. Well, I love also to talk about um, Bamboo Bicycle because actually you're the first um, Bamboo Bicycle builder or designer in, at the podcast. And it's a, um, a very emotional um, topic, I believe. A bicycle being something um, which is a, a utility, but also highly uh, something people love to use, right? And even more. So um, this is um, this is really great to have you here. Okay, so um, in case uh, you don't know, we're gonna record. Or we're recording this, and then we're publishing it on YouTube. So it's Think Bamboo on YouTube and uh, Spotify and. Uh, X and um, LinkedIn and all the places where you want to have this information. So it'll be there. Um, so if you like, agree or disagree, comment and subscribe. Um, yeah. So that's um, from my side. So um, let's now dig into um, your story as well. So you build bamboo bicycles and you're located in Germany. Correct. So um, that's correct. <laughs> so how how did that happen how did you what's your journey how did you f discover bamboo have you always been uh into bicycles um tell us please uh, well what i can say is bicycles always were the big thing for me from the age of 13 14 i had a struggle with my parents to get a race bike instead of a, a normal bike and yeah, at the end, I, I succeeded, and the bicycling <laughs> was always there. And uh, doing things manually, I have a, I, I had an office job all my life, but doing things manually, building things with brain and hand, uh, always had a, had a big attraction to me. So, uh, yeah, I, I used to build wristwatches, mechanical wristwatches as a hobby mm. earlier. Uh, but after, after the 50th wristwatch, I got bored of it. And um, it was about that, that time, it was in roughly 2015, when my former colleague on a Friday afternoon in the meeting said, I need to go a bit earlier today because I have to go and uh, to the workshop and build my bamboo bike. I said, oh my God, wow, never heard of before. And, but it gave me the opportunity to watch and build it. And, and step by step by step, I got more attracted. Of it. I think more or less, this is it. And then I found the time to do it myself, and we formed Smart Grass Bicycles as a company. And from day one on, we not just wanted to build a bike for us, we wanted to do workshops for people who want to build a bike for their personal needs. Yeah, that, that is the starting, that was the starting point, as I said, in 2015, meanwhile, a while ago. Wow. Yeah, that's that's quite a journey, 2015 <laughs> till today, right? <laughs> yes, yeah. yes. Wow, cool. Well, and and yeah, go, go ahead. No, no, sorry. Um, but um, yeah, uh, so the um, you focused early on for, on, on tailor made and, and like enabling uh, people to to build their own bicycles, right? Yes. Cool. Yes, I did. No mass production. I still can say I haven't built the same bike twice. Wow. We okay, that's cool. Start with people from scratch by talking to them and saying, "Well, what do you want? What should you be? What are your body measures? What are, what are your likes and dislikes and, and all those things?" And then we, based on that, calculate the frame sizes and build the frame. We have we wow. we have different methods. We have a more extensive workshop that there's six days, six full days to build the frame, and we have a less uh, uh, time-consuming uh, virtual format with using prefabricated components, which can be done in one or a little more than one day. The frame. And, 
a workshop is like you have the client and you guys are there and you're in your um in and you work together step by step yes. wow that's exactly it. so people all, all all people need is to go there and trust themselves that they can do it wow. that's all so they they supply we supply the workshop we supply the tools and materials and and the knowledge, of course, that's the most important the part. Yes, the <laughs> cool. Okay. Um, so basically, you, you're like doing, like compared to something uh, people would know, like like tailor made a, a sports uh, a vehicle. But uh, yeah, so this is high end and and pretty uh, absolutely very unique um, results. Like every bicycle is unique. Yeah. Yes. Wow. Yeah, in one way or the other, well, every bumper bike, bike bicycle is anyway unique because there's yeah. no, there are no two bumper canes so the same. Of course, but but now how you explain that you really adapt it to the to the to the owner of the bike, so it's like um, also the shoes. For example, I know like professional skiers, they have like their tailor made shoes and all that. So this is like similar, but the whole bicycle. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Awesome. Okay. And um, how come, why bamboo bicycle? Why not carbon bicycle or aluminum bicycle or a glass fiber bicycle or uh, I don't know what other uh, type of material we can use to do bicycle? Bolt. I mean, there's so many options. How come the bamboo is, um, is the material you're using? to build those tailor-made bicycles? I think at the beginning it was mainly because it, bamboo allows you to build a bike without a lot of tooling, without a lot of things, without of, uh, financial resources. Bamboo is cheap and you don't need a lot of special equipment to do it. That was mm -hmm. one of the reasons. The other, the other reason probably was I like the contradiction between a natural material and a technical product. That is a kind of a tension in the bike which you experience whenever you build one. And uh, it took me a while to, to say that sentence as I do it now, but I always felt it and, and uh, it's a key thing. And then by the time I learned, bamboo has some special capabilities no other material has, or no other material has to that extent. And uh, the key thing, uh, it, it's, it's, of course, it is, uh, uh, it, it is, Durable, of course, it is good in the light of uh, how you can reduce a carbon footprint. But the key thing for me, as as bicycle, is uh, the the vibration damping capabilities bamboo has. You feel uh, that? The, you feel that maybe not in the first ten seconds, mm -hmm. but after one hundred kilometer, clearly you do. Wow. Yeah. So it's it's like having a, a, a suspension, but it's a natural no, no, suspension. No, no, it's it's not shock. It's, it's not shock. It's vibration. It's vibration. That is something people don't realize how much vibration is in a frame, just by the, having the tires rolling on the road, or using the brakes or whatever. You always have a little vibration that creates a little sound, and mm -hmm. it is you can feel it in your hands over time. It is tiring. Mm -hmm. And that is what bamboo, what bamboo does perfectly. Bamboo, uh, a bamboo cane has very dense fibers at the outside and less dense fibers to the inside. So to, mm -hmm. to put it, to put it in a, in a bit simplified way, uh, every every vibration uh, finds the density to die in, mm. and that makes it very comfortable. And that gives it gives this feeling of. Uh, quiet surfing on a, on a, on, on a bike mm. and that is actually I think that is the, that is something that makes bamboo unique as a material for bikes so it's, it's the frame the bamboo frame which is uh, actually absorbing the vibration during the ride if doing the ride if you build it right <laughs> <That's> have, a... <laughs> yeah, yeah of course you can make you you, you, can, you can do it you if you have something in between that is, is metal or mm -hmm. cover it so. with other materials, then the vibration goes through there and you 
you lose that capability, so you have to build it mm -hmm. in the right way, but that, that is okay. And can you measure that also technically, or is it something you, you feel when you drive like more than 10 minutes or, or, or something like that? I never try to measure you feel. Uh, it would be different from bike to bike. Of course, it, they, all, they all have built from different bamboo, and it mustn't make a lot of sense to measure and compare if it's different from bike to bike. Anyway. If you would build the same bike again and again, yeah, I would probably yeah. try to measure. No, but thinking like compared to to classic, let's say fiber, glass fiber or carbon. I don't know what are the other alternative personal um, tailor-made bicycles. What are they made when they're not built in bamboo? Like uh, yeah, you can have a tailor-made bike from every material. It's just a matter of how much money you want to invest. And exactly. That's the that's the other question, of course. How. How is the bamboo tailor-made bamboo bicycle compared to the other alternative? Is it in the high end or is it equal or money-wise? Yeah. Yeah, I think with carbon, I would say a carbon, a tailor-made carbon frame mm -hmm. is ten times as expensive as a bamboo bike. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Well, it may be eight, it may be twelve. I don't know exactly, but yeah. Try, try to find a, find a shop that builds you a tailor-made carbon bike. It would be Difficult. <laughs> yeah, well, even a not tailor-made titanium bike costs mm -hmm. four or five thousand euro, which is three times as much as we, we charge for, for a course. Wow, so it's it's not it's not only super high end. It's it's kind of affordable compared to the super yes. high end uh, material. Not, uh, I mean, one thing is the material. The other is the the result, the, the end solution tailored yes. to the uh, cycler, right, or the owner. <laughs> yeah. And that, that, that okay. comes back to what I said in the in the beginning. Uh, we are outside the bamboo the bamboo belt. We're living not in a low-wage country. Absolutely. It's uh, expensive the time, in Germany. The time, the time needed to build a frame is roughly 40 hours. If you wow. pay 40 hours a high-qualified person, up. this is why we do workshops where people build their own. Then this mm. portion of, of the, the end price uh, is, not, is, is not there, it goes down. Uh, uh, that makes also the difference in the in the business models of bamboo bike builders within uh, within the bump, uh, the bamboo belt, which also is mostly a low cost country. And Absolutely, yeah, that's the classic approach. Yeah. Yeah, and all the others outside that changes over time and changes rapidly, which is good. But uh, for the time being, I think the only way uh, to to have bamboo bikes on the road in a country, in, in, in a Western uh, uh, high-wage country, is to, to run workshops. But that's not the only reason. I'm personally not interested in repeating and only looking at the money side of things. I'm trying to bring the whole thing of bamboo bike building forward. So so to say, we have a kind of a mission statement for, for, for Smart Bus Bicycle. And that mission statement is, bring sustainability and high-tech together. And that means we are adopting as much as we can of the latest developments in bike technologies, which are mm -hmm. really smart technologies nowadays, and bring them into the bubble bike, but make them invisible. It should look, mm. but what you want, should see is bamboo and a plain, clean thing. Nevertheless, it is a bit of an art form uh, to deal with the tension of uh, what a natural material tells you, what impression it gives to you, and what a high-tech uh, uh, vehicle gives you. And if mm -hmm. that comes together, some people do like this contradicting thing, uh, and others don't. Yeah, yeah of course. As, as a SO from the life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I agree, I agree. But it's interesting. So, yeah, it's it's like this merging of, of natural... Um, material with with uh, modern high-tech um, technological or mechanical uh, approach right yeah exactly. so uh, 
because the components you use for the bicycle, which are like high tech, are like the, the, the speeds, or how do you call them to change the speed, right? This is like electric now, yeah, or gear, has it could be gear? Electric. It could be gear shifting system, yeah. It could be electric, it could be uh, mechanical, it could be. Uh, there, there were areas. It depends on what the client likes and uh, needs. Yes. So anything is quite possible. Um, yeah, absolutely. Almost. Ha have you now the funny part? <laughs> have you <laughs> built a electric um, bamboo bicycle yet? <laughs> a couple of. E -bikes. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. E -bikes, cargo bikes. Yeah. Ah, because uh, they're like the the very long one, and they can carry the like jones, two. The long jones. Long jones. Type. So the one uh, uh, two two wheels and, and quite long. With mm. all the load sitting in front of the driver. How much load do they carry, more or less, or can they carry? I don't know. We never reached. We never reached the limits. Wow. <laughs> so okay. we built one. We built one, which is quite a huge one uh, for the city where I live in. Actually, they run a project, and we built with other people here from the city a cargo bike, a huge cargo bike, uh, to transport all the. All the little parcels on the post uh, from the one uh, office to the other of the local administration and mm -hmm. uh, that that can take a lot I, I i assume it goes up to 100 kilograms but i don't know wow on load, not, not on load. load. that's amazing wow yeah. but that's that's like a hybrid then with with electric battery it's, it's and an e, it's an e-bike yes it's, it's an e-bike yeah, yeah it's an e-bike cool well, so basically anything is possible with the bamboo bicycle. And one of the big advantages is this um, uh, vibration reduction, uh, which is uh, quite interesting. Um, but this is on the road, right? So if, you're, if we're talking, what's about the, the off-road for the, for the mountain bikes? Same thing or is it? Absolutely the same things. I, I never built a downhill bike. So the very heavy, rough ones. Mm -hmm. uh, well, nobody ever that would be more extreme, right? That the is, downhill. Is really extreme, really extreme. And with those bikes, you can only do one thing: go down the downhill. Because they're yeah. so heavy and they're so so massive. And yeah, I, I uh. never saw a reason to build one of them. What we recently built is a walking bike. That was an interesting. Walking project. bike? Yeah, walking bike without pedals. Oh. So like like in the 1800 or how 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 exactly. I've not... back to the roots. <laughs> wow. <laughs> At the beginning, I thought that is a simple thing to do, and it is not. It's not. Actually, the story behind it is a guy came and he was he, he did already tour around the globe on a bike. Okay. And then he said, yeah. "I want to do it again with a walking bike. <laughs> Can you build one with me?" Well. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, we designed it, but it is you can't have luggage in the rear because you need the mm. space for your legs. So where mm -hmm. do you put the luggage? You need in the something front. to lean against while you mm -hmm. while you while you walk on the bike. Yeah. And, yeah. and it, it, the whole thing needs to be lower because your legs need to touch the ground. Otherwise, mm -hmm. you won't get anywhere. And uh, yeah, that that is not easy to build. I tell you. Wow, so that's the interesting. So pioneers did something that got lost and we had to relearn it. Wow, wow. Yeah, because I mean, bicycles as we know them today, how, how old are they? What, how, what are we talking? Uh, two, three hundred years? That's it? No. The f no? Well, the first bicycle was built by a guy called Tice in, and the first known ride was in 1817. That's the first known one, 1817. Yeah, I don't think there was one earlier. That's an endless discussion about whether without without being able to steer, this is already a bicycle. Mm -hmm. or not. bicycle the first one yeah. you could steer was in mm -hmm. 1817. And mm -hmm. uh, the, the pedal was invented, invented and, and uh, the, the inflatable tires were invented and the chain was invented uh, in the uh, in first kinds of were available earlier, but really it hit the road in roughly 1884, 85. 
Wow, so it's pretty not that lot old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's interesting. Yeah, that's interesting. And what, where, where, when was the first bamboo bicycle built then? That's More or less. Story. The first, yeah, well, we know it by the minute. Oh, okay. That's surprising, <laughs> yes. Uh, I, out of my head, I think it was the 16th of February, 1894, when a guy called Robinson in, in Paris went to the local administration and files a patent on bamboo bikes. Wow. And he came there, I, I was, don't, 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 uh, I'm not 100% sure, I think it was 11.26 in the morning. The interesting thing is you know it by the minute because the administration recorded when he entered. The stamp. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> cool. So we exactly wow. know how old the bamboo bikes are. Wow. And in 1894 That's... was the time where invention about bamboo bikes were made around the world, mainly in the UK then, and later in the US, and later in Austria and other places. All of a sudden, it boomed. Wow. Okay. And do you have the name of the this this guy? Robinson, like like Robinson Crusoe, Robinson. Wow, Robinson. Okay, that's a that's an interesting I story. I have his patent, so it's quite funny. Oh, wow. It's, a, it's cool. in one of my books. All well, oh, those wow. ordinary books, it's in one of my books. Ah. Yes, that was the other story. You mentioned you published a book recently, right? Uh, four books, actually. Four books. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> well, if recently so, is four years, it's four books. I published a book this year. I'm working on the next one. Uh, the one with the, with, the, with the history of Bamboo Bike is the one I published in 2019. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a kind of a result of what I explained at the beginning. We started to do workshops for people who want to build the bikes. And at mm -hmm. one point, when we had the feeling we are in control of that process in one way or the other, we started to thinking, think about what do the others do? Where are they? And meanwhile, you find a lot of bumper bike builds up, but in 2017, there weren't that many. Man. So I, I was able to find, I don't know exactly, two dozen or so. And uh, I tried to get in touch with them. And yeah, one or two were close by in Switzerland or in Germany, but uh, the majority was somewhere in the world. And then I said, okay, if they are somewhere in the world, I need to go there. <laughs> and then I said, uh, but I need to have a reason to go there. So I sent them a mail and said, I would like to visit you. And uh, the purpose is, I want to buy, I'm a bumble bike builder myself, but I want to write a book about bumble bike building. And that's actually what I did. I, I, I took a couple of months off and went uh, to the west till I came back from the east, toward around the and visited all I could find. Wow. So you, you compiled a book after that uh, yes. exploring. I did all the interviews. I did all the interviews like we do it here in the podcast. I did all the interviews with those guys so I could compare what, what their motivation is, what their method is, what kind of bamboo they build, for whom they build it, and all those stories. And in the course of that trip around the globe, somebody pointed me to the history of bamboo. I wasn't that much interested into the history, but I got the question, and then I changed changed my flights and, and flew to a place in Austria where in 1896 uh, the first bumble bikes were built, and then I got amazed about their construction ideas, which did get lost in the industrial manufacturing of bikes, and I'm trying mm. to... Give, give birth again to those ideas of how to how to connect bamboo bikes uh, in, in in joints in a bike frame, in a bamboo bike frame. That's a bit what I'm constantly working. On. Okay, that's interesting. That's so uh, that's in the book. So we we have to see. The, uh, is there are there any parts of the book which are publicly like available, or have you published blog posts about it, or or parts, or is it just like? You have to purchase it over over Amazon or wherever you can buy it. 
Yeah, this book is uh, in, in German and in English available in two versions, in two languages. It's quite a thick thing, 300 something pages, a large book. And wow. you can have it as an e book and, or as a printed version. The printed version is terribly expensive, the e book version is affordable. <laughs> As usual, yeah, yeah, I know that. Yeah, but uh, yeah, <laughs> that's it's on the good books. It's Amazon, whoever wants to, there it is. And and that's you have photos there, I assume too, with about all the different. Yes. Yeah. Hundreds. Of awesome. Them. Awesome. Cool. So yeah, yeah that four books. Is that, this is. I, I published a book recently. This is yeah. this is the read. Where am I? Getting Atelier bamboo books? and bikes. Bamboo and bikes, yeah, this is only in German, but this is a different thing. This is not so much about the history and the bamboo bike builders. This is more about how you can personalize your bamboo bike to the, as much as you can. By, for example, mm -hmm. laser carving the tubes. There are people mm -hmm. who have sleeve tattoos on their arms, and now they have sleeve tattoos on their bike frame. The same Ah, tattoos. okay, yeah, 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 yeah. Cool, Things cool. Like yeah yeah awesome yeah so that is more the, the the design the design approach to it that's not mm -hmm. that much technology and of course there's always the idea of sustainability sitting behind the scenes uh, but the main approach here and we're running a, lot, a series of exhibitions and doing with, with, art, with artists that's another book it's also an Amos. it's all in Amos. Oh, uh, regarding exhibitions, we met briefly at the European Bamboo Expo in Germany. Was it this year? Yeah. And um, so you're at lots of ex exhibitions or the ones you can attend, of course, because uh, uh, probably you, you can't uh, fragment yourself and be everywhere. <laughs> being at the workshops, being at the expositions. And I mean, yeah, <laughs> it has to be challenging, right? <laughs> it is challenging. <laughs> It's yeah, interesting. I to, yeah, I, I have to share my time between the one or the other activity. But yeah, absolutely. Okay, um, but um, yeah. So um, I understand now that the, the, the your unique approach of doing the workshops uh, really helps also to to um, have a more affordable price. But it's it's it's. It's not just the price motivation. It's it's more to create something unique every time for every client. Kind yes, of. To, that is that is absolutely the point. Make it in, in personal loss and individual. But on the other hand, we're sometimes building bikes to do exit to do uh, send them into contests, bike contests. So, so like like prototypes or or, or contests yeah, in are, in like. These are bikes. These are bikes. Just bikes. Of course, but, they are they are mostly built for the first time. You can call it a prototype. Second time, that would be better. Well, well, for example, we won the German Design Award in 2017 with one of our bikes. Wow! And of course, those bikes were not built by by virtual participants. This is our yeah. knowledge, and we we do of the course best we can and try to bring bring a bubble bike building forward by incorporating new ideas, new concepts, new designs, new construction ideas, whatever. Pushing the limit. <laughs> pushing the limit, so, yeah. <laughs> pushing that limit. So um, there I have the one of the last questions which uh, I was wondering, which is like we talked briefly before about that, which is regarding the, the bike frame. So um, the, you said like um, the bike frame is maybe between 40 and 50% of the weight of the entire bike. Roughly is that correct? Yes. Yeah, roughly. Okay. So that's interesting because, of course, now um, if uh, we have a bamboo bicycle, um, we can have maybe 50, maybe 60%, which is bamboo, and the rest will be uh, the other components, right? Which are um, like uh, the ones which are available on the market, which are m not from bamboo, right? <laughs> Metal, rubber, carbon. An aluminium or, or, or a carbon and whatever, everything probably depending on, on the brand, on the, on the quality, uh, whatever. Um, yeah. So I think that's interesting too, to, to keep that in mind that um, you 
probably can't build right now 100% bamboo bike because you need the wheels, rubber. You need uh, some parts which connect uh, and the front part of the wheel, which is like, I've seen some build that uh, frame, the front, what, what's it called? Uh, um, fork. Got, fork. The fork. Yes, the fork. Yeah. The fork is really the tricky part if you want to build it in bamboo, right? Is it, or is it, is it doable yeah, it's, or? It's doable. Uh, actually, even the pioneers from day one did it in bamboo, but and it, still, it, 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 yeah, they, they all had bamboo forks. Wow. Um, but, of course, there were also metal parts in it. The bridge ah. between the two, between the, uh, the two sides of the fork is always mm -hmm. metal. Has to be, yeah. 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 But still, because I think the fork, um, I mean... I remember some bikes from Cannondale, what is Bad Boy or something? They had a fork just on one side, like the motorcycle. Yeah. And I think it's it's it's. I mean, it's it's an optical thing, but it's there is a lot of pressure there, and it's you have to build it like it it has to work right there. You can have the fork like breaking off or stuff like that. But it's interesting to, to learn that from day one, they did that also um, with bamboo. So, um, interesting. I think the handlebar out of bamboo is simple to do. The handlebar, yeah, that's, the, yeah, yeah. The yeah. fork is possible. Some do the saddle out of bamboo, the cover wow. of the saddle. Is that not it's like, a oh, it's a fiber. Yeah, yeah it's but a then, fiber. Yeah, it's, it, it's to some extent bamboo. Some built the rims of the wheels out of bamboo or of wood. Ooh. That is possible. Also, yeah. what that probably but maintenance still, there. Yeah. <laughs> or the water. Yeah. Water is a tricky part there. Or, or like you have to cover it with something to, to be sure to enable that it won't get humid, right? Usually a bamboo cane is not losing a lot of water to the outside on the sides of the cane. It only mm -hmm. loses um, where you cut the fibers. Yeah. Taking on water or losing water is not that difficult if it doesn't happen to wrap it. Mm. So if you have sudden changes in temperature yeah, or in humidity, yeah. That's not mm -hmm. good. It might crack. But if you, for mm -hmm. example, seal the ends of the fibers, mm -hmm. cover it with some kind of lacquer, different ways mm -hmm. of doing it, take care that there's nothing in that little animals like to, to, to drill into it. Yeah. You know, starch, no sugars. Sugar. Start. Yeah. That yeah, it yeah. needs to get, be out before you build the bike. That's part mm -hmm. of the preparation of the bamboo. Uh, then you're pretty safe. And if you have a crack, it doesn't affect the stability much. Mm. If we have, yeah, the, the fibers in, bamboo, in a bamboo cane tend not to be very, very much linked to each other. They sit in parallel and they're extremely mm -hmm. strong in bending in that direction, but they're not adhering to each other. In a, in a, mm, that's in interesting. Way. So that's anyway not nothing where a bamboo is extremely strong in. And if it cracks, mm -hmm. you all, all you need to do is make sure that the water exchange between inside and outside needs to be under control. So you need to seal it again. Or if the crack is a bit wider, what we usually use is we need, uh, we use little pieces of bamboo fibers which by sanding bamboo you might gain, mix it with a, with a with an epoxy in this case and fill the gap. Mm. And it looks good and it is no problem at all. And okay, that's interesting. If you a carbon bike, you wouldn't be able to do anything of the like of this, like this. No. Because if if carbon cracks, it cracks. It's over. <laughs> and in yeah. a second, it cracks and you're on the road. And that never so happens. that's it. That's an interesting uh, detail. So actually, the the bamboo bike is is easier or doable to repair compared to the carbon bike, which 
if it cracks, it's like game over. You have to change yes. whatever part has cracked totally. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting yeah. that in, uh, the, the pioneers of bubble bath building from Austria in 1896 already had a concept where the canes were linked in the joints by they were put in lugs and these lugs were just screwed tight. Mm. So if it cracks, they could open the screw, replace and... it with another one, screw it, wow. and it's done. And that is an idea we try. That's an idea we try to uh, adapt implement. Yeah. Interesting. With technologies with more mm -hmm. materials, not like they did 125 but... They were forward thinking back then, which sometimes yeah. today has been totally lost because we think that uh, we can replace anything like just like buying a new bike instead of fixing it and, and building it the way that you can fix it. That's interesting. Mm. And you have to find a frame of any material that you can unscrew parts and, and yeah. fix and, and screw yeah. it together again. That's almost impossible. You won't find yeah. well industry is, is not not working that way yeah they don't think that way exactly that's the, it's they the mindset that way. they're not producing yeah. that way they actually mm -hmm. not interested they rather buy it sell yeah. it buy. not right now but uh i mean yeah. once this is like done again people get hopefully go uh, get used to it and 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 like will be looking for that ideally <laughs> Yeah, cool. So, um, Oswald, is there any other um, current project you want to share or um, you're working right now? So you mentioned um, the new book. <laughs> yeah. Maybe something else? That's the, project, that's the project we're working on, actually, Bamboo and Bike, to involve more and more artists, but also everybody who wants to, to really design a bike that is personal, to the utmost what we can get to. That is one mm -hmm. thing, that is more a design project. What I'm currently doing is I'm, I'm writing a book again, and this time I try something different. I try to write a novel. Mm. Yeah, I'm <laughs> doing, I'm traveling on a time machine through the history on bike building and visit the people I, that live now, which I've done on my tour around the globe, and visit the people who uh, built bikes 125 years ago, and uh, talk to them about bike building and describe them in their environment. And the conclusion is a bit something which we touched upon already. What are the ideas over 125 that are still being are still worth being considered today? Today. So I have wow. the patterns for that, and I'll have uh, the ideas, and I'll describe the people in which situations they do it, and I'll conclude in a concept uh, how it could look like today. That's and that's all in a novel, and it has some virtual, some KI elements in it, uh, using wow. all kinds of things, uh, which uh, uh, yeah, just to link it to what's currently being discussed around the. Interesting. So that's a total different approach, but uh, mixing uh, history and future together. Yeah, I think we all know the movie Matrix. We all Absolutely. Know, uh, what it means, uh, uh, the discussion about is our world a simulation or is it a real world? And are there simulated worlds? And um, I'm using a bit a simulated world as a time machine to meet people from other centuries. And uh, Interesting. that is, the, that, that is the, the, the story in the story that keeps the elements together and the rest is bubble bikes. Cool, cool. I'm trying it. I'm so, trying. Let's see where we get. Well, you have to try else you never know if it will, if it will be possible or not, right? I mean, like everything. <laughs> Amazing. And, like everything. Okay, um, so um, I think I'll, we'll have lots of, of good content here. Also, um, I'm going to create a, a blog article about our podcast, 
where I'll share some photos and some videos or, or material you have on your website. Um, and um, yeah, I'm looking forward uh, on on following you and seeing what 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 what's going to happen with the bamboo uh, uh, design and and frames in future. It looks really. Uh, I mean, I'm really impressed what I learned today, and uh, I think it's it's highly interesting. <laughs> thank you very much, Oswald. <laughs> Same me. I love talking about bamboo. <laughs> Take care, Oswald.